<laughs> and again, the toll-free number if you have a question about a spider or an insect of another kind, it's uh, toll-free always, 888-539-8859. And Martha's on the line in Central. Hey, Martha. Hello. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. What you got today? Um, I was checking my raised beds yesterday evening, and I saw something that really surprised me. I'm, <laughs> I'm calling because it looked to me like a certain thing that I didn't know was possible, but you would know, I'm sure. There's a certain insect that I've seen a lot of in the greens in our raised beds, and they seem to like damp places like the cardboard, wet cardboard, and they'll be down deep in the bundles of greens where the dew stays. They're brown, dark brown. Um, they have visible antenna, but they're not very long. Their bodies are long and thin. They have what looks like half-sized wings, two half-sized oh. wings on their back, and two pointy things on the end of their yeah at the, the tip of their body. Yeah, Grab, little yeah, grabbers. yeah. Martha, don't tell my wife this, but I saw one in my kitchen the other night, and it was a big one. <laughs> it was a big guy. But well, uh, a couple of them have come into our house too. Yep. Um, but I've seen plenty of those, and so that was not surprising. Mm -hmm. But I found what. <sighs> okay. My eyesight's not very good, but I asked my husband to confirm. Always a good idea. It looked just like one of those bugs, except it was pure white, and its body was translucent, and we could see its internal organs. Mm -hmm. Is it possible for an insect to be albino? Oh, I'm going to let Pat handle this. I think mm -hmm. Pat can handle both of these <laughs> questions. Uh, first question, um, probably what you had w was an earwig. And uh, they're very common in in uh, moist environments, and they're they're such cool insects because they have this pre-social behavior where the female actually guards the eggs until they hatch, and a little while after that, and she she'll excavate an area in the soil and sort of wrap her body around those eggs, and she'll leave periodically, but she. But, but once they hatch, then they disperse away, and she doesn't have any more contact with them. So she takes care of them. And in terms of a pest problem, occasionally uh, earwigs can, can feed on, on roots and, and be plant feeders, but it's actually very rare for them to be problematic. So I don't think you need to worry about that very much at all. Um, translucent insects, albino insects, probably not. They wouldn't make it in the environment probably long enough to um, mate because they um, they just stick out like a store, sore thumb. So all the things that prey on insects like like birds and small mammals would would see it a um, long way off and and it would probably get gobbled up. More than likely, what you what you saw was an insect that had just molted from one stage to another, one instar to another. Because insects have those exoskeletons, in order to grow, they have to get rid of their old skin. And uh, when they do that, they're pale in color, they have to go through a hardening and darkening process. And you can see, you can see the internal organs often in, uh, until they go through that process. And if you look inside that cast skin that they have, it's really neat because you can you can see the lining of their foregut and their hindgut and their entire respiratory system. So with well, um, a magnifying glass. <laughs> yeah. Well, or a big insect. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> if you have a cicada nymph, those are really cool yeah. to look at. Yeah. 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 So Martha, we think, and we're pretty positive you had uh, earwigs. Ooh, and, and earwigs have been coming in on our lettuce and yeah. greens all fall, all spring, mm -hmm. and and there are aphids on our fruits, I mean, our vegetables, too, and the earwigs seem to be maybe, do they make a meal of aphids? They can. Yeah, I think yeah. that's what they're doing. Mm -hmm. we, we have a project that we're involved in in uh, Cambodia where we're trying to help vegetable farmers um, control insect pests with little or no pesticides, and they're rearing in, uh, earwigs in Indonesia, too, uh, predatory earwigs, yeah, so you want to get the right one. Keep down the, mm -hmm. the yeah, so they can actually bugs. be not, o not only benign, but actually beneficial in the garden. It's just when they come into our house in large numbers, they're kind of pesty, but as Point Pat pointed Point out, Pat not, <laughs> not a serious problem, generally. Yeah.
just a nuisance. Just sometimes they can be in great numbers, too, and sort of surprise you, and then they're kind of yeah. yicky. And but. they don't bore into your brain. They don't get in your ear. And they, the pinchers are kind of scary looking, which is the backside of them. Some people think it's big, long mouth parts, but the big, long things are their, their Cersei, and it's really just to protect them from, from predators and give them a chance to get away. They don't attack you with them. Yeah. They're pretty cool insects. Well, thank you for okay. the information. It was such a strange thing. Yeah. It was beautiful, though. So I'll tell my husband what you said. He won't believe it. <laughs> ah, yeah. Well, please tell him. We've seen, we've also seen cockroaches right after they sure. molted, and they are very white, mm-hmm. very <laughs> transparent oh. white. Yeah. Hideous things. Al- <laughs> it's like ghost cockroaches. Mm. You know? Albino, you know, yeah. never, never say never, never say always, but albino insects are exceedingly rare. So usually when you see a quote-unquote albino insect. It's just one that's in the process of molting. Mm-hmm. Well, okay. I'll always remember that now. Thank you very much. All right, Martha. Thanks take care. Bye. Bye-bye.